greetings, volunteers. We appreciate you guys coming and hanging out with us at the 2023 Simone Biles International Invitational. My name is Zach Francis. I'm the general manager of WCC, and this is Michelle Barr, Hello. our events mm -hmm. coordinator director, and she is going to be your main point of contact as you're volunteering, signing up, that kind of stuff. And so I'm going to throw it over to her to give you a brief rundown of the event. Yes, yeah, so welcome again. Thank you. We certainly could not do this without you. And as Zach said, it is our international invitational. This year we have countries, Canada, Aruba, El Salvador, and Mexico. So we are super excited, plus athletes from all over the United States. So let me say, we cannot do this without you. So we appreciate you. The um, Just a couple of little things, just some housekeeping Please make sure that you allow yourself enough time when, once you arrive to George R. Brown. It takes a while to find your parking, walk inside, check in, and then get to your assigned um, volunteer spot. So I would allow yourself an extra 30, 45 minutes on top of your travel time just to ensure that you get there and that we are able to start on time. Because we are a sanctioned event, it is very important that we are on time um, so we don't... Um, you know, have any little hiccups or anything like that. So um, we ask that if you can just wear a red shirt um, upon arrival, you will get a lanyard that will say volunteer. That way everyone will know um, how important you are, <laughs> especially to us and how much we need you. And um, so you're able to walk around um, George R. Brown without any issues. The, um, again, as I mentioned, it is a sanctioned event, so it is timed. So we definitely need to make sure please text me. Um, I will include all my information in the emails that are going out. And if you can, if at all possible, give me a minimum of 24 hours notice if there's any reason that you cannot show up for your shift. Um, please delete on the Sign Up Genius as well, but also if you could text me and let me know, I may not have access to be able to run and check that Sign Up Genius um, kind of while we're in the heat of the competition and everything. So I sure would appreciate that. Um, also, once you come in and you check in at that volunteer desk, if you are more working more than one session in a day, I'm going to have an envelope with you or for you with your name on it that will allow you to have a meal voucher for the day. Um, again, we certainly could not do this without you, so we certainly appreciate you. Um, so again, the day of the event, you come in, you check in, you get your lanyard. We will um, tell you where your assignment is and kind of where you're going. And there's a couple of different things that we have needs for um, a door greeter. We need that person to help greet, um, smile, welcome the guests, the athletes and their families. Um, I need help with autograph signing. We need um, additional help in our coaches and judges hospitality area. That's certainly to help make sure that only coaches and only judges are in that area um, because people do tend to wander. So we need to make sure, you know, we're just keeping it the, the flow and people where they are and where they're um, supposed to be. Um, we'll need a floor runner at each session that is strictly kind of assigned to the meet director and it's anything and everything that she needs. Sometimes it's printing of scorecards and running it to a table or to a specific judge, um, maybe something to the front desk. So that position is something um, where it would require a lot of walking. I have noticed on the Sign Up Genius, y'all are doing a great job letting me know who is limited in their walking um, or who really needs to sit. So we will absolutely make sure that we are honoring of that and put you um, in the best place for you. If for some reason you get there and it's not something you can do, do not stress. We will flip something around and we will make sure that you are taken care of. That will not be a problem <laughs> um, at all. Um, one of the biggest needs that we have are timers that are on the floor. So I'm going to give it back to Zach for a second. That way he can explain that and everything. But every single role is a, is important, and so we certainly do appreciate y'all. Yeah, so timers in the gym, that is going to be the lion's share of what our volunteers are doing. And so in essence, what that means is that you're going to be assigned to a specific event. And so in our gymnastics competition, we have floor, vault, mm -hmm. beam, and bars. Okay, you don't have to know anything about gymnastics. It's going to be okay as long as you know how to push start, stop, and can do, you know, what's five times one and do a little bit of math. We're going to be able to figure this out, okay? So in essence, what happens is that as athletes go to each event, they have a certain amount of time to warm up. And so the coaches are given two options. They can warm up each athlete individually 
or they can warm up their entire group in what we refer to as a block. So for instance, I think one of our lower levels, they get one minute per athlete. And so if a coach comes up and they got seven athletes on bars, you say, coach, would you like to warm up individually or as a block? And if they said as a block, so you say, all right, coach, you got seven minutes to warm up. And so you'd hit that start button as soon as the first kid starts warm up. And that's generally what they consider uh, touching the equipment for the first time after all the kids are ready. And so the timer is going to be going and it's seven minutes that you're counting up to. Or you could even use your phone and do a countdown timer if you'd like. And then we'll holler at the coach and say, hey, coach, you got one minute left. Hey, coach, you got 30 seconds left. Coach, time's up. And at that point in time, the coach and the athlete should be respective of the situation and they should step down uh, from the equipment and they're done with their warm up uh, during that period of time. And so what we're going to be doing in most of our gyms is what's called um, a two flight setup. So we're going to have two sets of beams or two vaults or two bars. And so you'll be at one set of equipment, you'll warm up all those athletes, and then you'll move to the second flight or the B side, and then you'll go warm up the athletes on that set of equipment. So you'll be alternating equipment that the judges are going to be judging athletes on. And so it's a pretty straightforward process, and every table in the gym should have a cheat sheet uh, for that level or that day that's going to say, you know, level threes get X amount of time. The bronze athletes get X amount of time. The level eights get X amount of time. So there's not a lot of unknown variables. It's just a little bit of flexibility. Smile. Enjoy watching some really cool gymnastics up close and personal. So. Yes. All right. Well, good. So after you've had literally the best day ever, <laughs> We need you to sign back out at the volunteer desk, return your lanyard, and then we have a special autographed gift that we would love to give you. Again, we are so appreciative and thankful for you. And on behalf of the Biles family, we just want to say thank you in advance for helping make this year's Invitational a success. Yep. Thank you, guys. And we'll see you this weekend. Yep. See you.